Do you know what to do if your child breaks a bone? Nearly 7 million Americans will suffer a break at some point this year. And what do you need to do before you head to the ER because it can make a big difference? We recently received an email from Diane in Lansing, Michigan. She writes to us, Dear doctors, I am a mother of two rambunctious boys, and I'm worried that one of them might break a bone. They're very athletic, and I cringe when they fall down. In the event of an injury, what should I do if they do break a bone before I can get them to the hospital? And you're not alone, Diane. We have Dr. Steve Yakubian here. He's an orthopedic surgeon, and he also brought along a helper, Daniel. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to prepare for this emergency. Most common fractures? The most common fractures you see in children are usually sports related. The bones that are involved are the, the clavicle or the collarbone, the forearm bone, and the shin bone. Those are the three top bones that are fractured. <laughs> you know, nowadays, there's so many kids in sports, so we're seeing more and more you know, fractures, broken bones. And I want you to get everything ready, because you're going to you volunteer, right? You don't have a broken bone, but we're going to show everyone at home what happens when you get a cast on. Okay. You good for that? Yes. And, and Marl, your mom, right? Yes, yes. And you're worried about him because you like a lot of sports. Yes. Yes, and yeah, I, I, I completely empathize with this viewer's uh, concern. I'm a mother of three sons, and they are flying down the stairs, jumping out of trees. And even though my husband is a, is a doctor, um, I'm very worried and concerned they're going to break bones. And I'd like to know what to do when he's not around and available. Yeah, the first thing uh, you do when you suspect a broken bone is uh, definitely stabilize it. If it, uh, oftentimes the extremity or the arm or the leg looks, looks deformed, and I usually recommend not you know, straightening it. And uh, splinting it would, would probably be the first thing. Put a simple newspaper here, and then so if you just put a roll of tape all the way around it just to hold it there and stabilize it until you get to the emergency department, that's probably the and best thing to do. And that's the best do. thing to do, or, absolutely. Or to the leg. Yeah. And, and after you've stabilize the broken bone. You can do things like uh, apply ice to the area to help with swelling. Just don't apply it directly to the skin. And once you do get to the emergency department, and, and let's do this cast demo, what the doctor is going to do initially in the emergency department is usually put on a splint because there's always that possibility of continued swelling. What happens when you do cast it right away is that the, the arm will continue to swell after the break and the patient becomes very uncomfortable. And that's why the splinting allows for the swelling until they go to the orthopedic surgeon. And at that point, the orthopedic surgeon can take off the, the cast, excuse me, they take off the splint and apply a cast, just like and we're doing for And these are Daniel. fiberglass? They are fiberglass casts. And uh, a lot of them these days are waterproof, so the kids can even swim in them. So this is just the so initial So you ready for prep. a cast? Yes. All right. All right. Let's do it real quick. And what are so, your favorite sports? Um, I play baseball, soccer, and tennis. All right. And there are things in those sports that can involve falling, what we call, we call falling on an outstretched hand. That's, and when that yeah, happens, that's... oftentimes in young kids, the forearm will break. And then the bones initially, if they are actually, if there's too much angulation, they will be set. Right. They, that's called a displaced fracture or a, a, a fracture that's out of position. By the way, that the you know there's a common misconception out there that there's a difference between a fracture and a broken bone, but as you know that the, there is no distinction between the two, and uh, doctors uh, refer to a, a bone that's broken as fractured, um, so there's no distinction between those. And two we have we have an animation of what we're talking about here with broken bones. You know, anytime you do break a bone. That's exactly what can happen. And that fracture can be a complete fracture, which goes all the way through. Like right there, that's called a transverse fracture that goes all the way through. Sometimes it can be an incomplete fracture. Or right there, that's called a, a comminuted fracture. Yeah, that's it's in multiple fracture. pieces. Right. And that's usually more serious. Those usually require uh, surgical intervention if it's a comminuted fracture. But again, those don't occur in children as, as often as you know. You know. So what color cast do you want, Daniel? Red. You want red, OK. Match your so, shirt. That's right. So luckily, the, in this day and age, we have lots of cool colors uh, for casts. And since he wanted a red, I'm going to just dip it in the, the warm water here. This is fiberglass, and it sets very quickly. So dipping it in warm water will allow it to do the rest. Lift up your arm there, Daniel. OK, open your hand like this. Great. So it it's literally sets within 
couple of minutes here, this will turn rock hard. You'll get to see that. But uh, other things to consider, I always tell kids, you know, don't put anything inside this cast. If it, if it itches, you know, don't, don't uh, stick any pencils or sticks in there. I've seen that all inside. And once these casts are on, approximately how many weeks? Uh, usually the rule of thumb is six weeks. After six weeks, the bone in children is healed and uh, it, it doesn't require any further immobilization. However, uh, there's, there may be some splinting or a soft, what we call a soft cast after uh, the initial cast comes off. It does tend to swell afterwards a little bit and elevation is important. And if it ever itches, don't, like I said, don't put anything in there. The, the smartest thing you can do is if you dip your fingers in a little bit of cold water, it can take the itch away. So, so how are you feeling, Daniel? Good. I want to thank you for being a volunteer. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Our next question is from someone who wants to.